Hey everyone, it's Fear Doorstop, one of the best series at Samus players in the world, and more than anyone, I understand she can be difficult to learn for players new to the game or coming from another character. Even those who have made her for a long time know that there's so much to optimize it can seem overwhelming. Her kit, while strong, is very unintuitive and not beginner friendly, so I'm here to help you by giving you three tips to improve your ZSS. Tip 1. Maximizing hit stun. Dating back to even when Smash Ultimate first dropped, there was a lot of misinformation going around about Zero Suit Samus stemming from partially true information. Foremost among this was that her infamous ladder combo that defined her play in Smash 4 was gone, and that it's never true or capable of killing in this game. Of course, if you ever watched a top level Zero Suit play, then you'll know this isn't the case, and that it is still one of her highest damaging and most lethal kill setups that is essential to succeed with her at high level. What created the misconception of the ladder combo being gone was that the combo requires much more specific conditions than it did in Smash 4, and it kills under less circumstances. There are two types of uppers that gets used in the ladder combo, rising uppers and landing uppers. Landing uppers are the easiest to combo off of, and will almost always be true into boost kick or more uppers. Comboing rising upper to up B, however, is much more specific. For this combo finisher to be true, two conditions must be met. The first condition is that the target must be at a high enough percent for up air to send them into tumble, and the second condition is that Samus must be right next to the target after the up air, close enough that the first hit of boost kick will connect. Failing to meet either of these conditions will give the opponent enough frames to air dodge. Thus meeting both of these requirements determines how ZSS must do the whole combo. You need to know how you'll finish the combo so that it ends with rising up air to up boost kick being true at the maximum possible height from the moment you hit your first up air. Simply mashing jump and up air and ending with up B after you have no more up airs will rarely be a true combo, and even rarer will be a lethal one. I'm sure many ZSS players watching this video already know this, but the common mistake most of them make is rushing the combo and cutting it off short, causing them to fail to secure stocks that the best Zero Suit players would have gotten. What I mean by rushing is that Zero Suit players often will hit a landing up air somewhere in the sequence and go for rising up air as soon as possible to continue the combo. This is where my first tip comes in. What they aren't realizing is that landing up air actually gives us so much frame advantage after hitting it that we can, if necessary, delay the next up air to also make it a landing up air as well, which gives you more time to make your next up air also a landing up air and so on, leading to longer extensions than just jumping. Furthermore, delaying the up air gives the assess more time to land after hitting the up air, making it easier to extend the platforms. This is essential because getting this landing up air extension on a platform puts her in the perfect position to instant double jump up air into boost kick, which is typically the best finisher to the ladder for maximum height. Start your ladders with the end of the combo in mind, always know how much hit stun you're working with after landing up airs, and make the most of it, and make the most of it to route the combo as favorably as possible. Do this and you'll find yourself getting significantly more kills and damage and advantage. Tip 2. Abusing her bot shifts. Picture this scenario, you just got hit by an opponent's combo starter. Fortunately, your DI was good, and maybe the opponent has rage or you're just outside of the percent window for the most optimal follow-up to be 100% true. There might be a small gap between the end of the hit stun on the combo starter and their follow-up. What do you press? Zero Suit Samus is known for her incredibly strong disadvantage options between great airspeed, a skinny hurtbox, double jump height, frame 2 air dodge, and of course her frame 3 invincible flip jump. As great as these options are, none are without their drawbacks in this situation. Mashing air dodge is the option that most characters would attempt in this situation, and having a frame 2 air dodge means that any, if any character could escape this combo by air dodging, Zero Suit could too. Unfortunately, Zero Suit Samus has the only air dodge in the game that cannot be fast followed, making it easier to cover and skilled players with their character would be able to recognize their next follow up may not connect and read or frame trap the air dodge with an even harder punish. Mashing Flip Jump is a tempting option, with the invincibility coming out frame 3, only one frame slower than air dodge, and it also lets her reposition far away from any follow-up, making it unpunishable even if the opponent expects it. The only downside is pretty big though. Zero Suit doesn't get Flip Jump back if she is hit out of it until she touches the ground again, meaning if you are clipped out of the opponent's hitbox after inputting it, even in those first two frames before you start moving, you will have to play the rest of the disadvantage sequence without your best tool. Mashing Double Jump is similar as she'll start moving away frame 3, but it has no invincibility and losing your Double Jump in disadvantage is arguably more dangerous than losing Flip Jump. But what if I told you there was another option, a frame 1 option that you can press as many times as you like, an option that unlike all the others can not only get you out of the opponent's string, but also has a hitbox that can completely flip the situation on its head. 
I'm of course talking about forward air. You're probably saying right now, but actually forward air is frame 6 and not frame 1. To which I would call you a nerd, because you're right, and I know that you're right, which makes me a nerd. But I'm not talking about the hitbox affair, I'm talking about her hurtbox. On the first frame of inputting forward air, Zero Suit's hurtbox shifts so far back she may as well have teleported. This hurtbox shift not only gets her out of barely untrue combos and sequences, it also gets her a counter hit that she can very frequently combo or even kill confirm out of. If you're doubting its effectiveness, watch any top level Zero Suit Samus pay, and pay attention to how often we spam Fair out of these situations. You'll never be able to unsee it. While Fair out of Hit Stun is one of her most irrelevant example of how to use Hurtbox shifting to her advantage, it is not the only one. The crouch on her grab and even lower crouch on her down tilt can often be used in neutral or advantage to punish people attempting to swing at her normally very tall upper body. These options are not always applicable, but try them out and get a feel for when they can be useful. Tip 3. Grabbing is a read on shield and not a reaction. I've given you a tip for advantage and disadvantage, so I figured it's time for a tip in neutral. If you ever heard me talk about Zero Suit Samus, perhaps on my Twitter that you should definitely follow right here, or during my Twitch streams, which you should definitely follow if you haven't right here, or perhaps during a Metafy session, which you should definitely book with me if you like everything you've heard so far and want more right here. You probably heard me say that she plays by a different set of rules than the rest of the cast. What I mean by that is that there are a lot of situations and aspects about the game that she doesn't have to think about as hard or in the same way as most other characters, and some situations where she has to think much harder. For example, her disadvantage is much easier to learn because of flip jump. One of the areas that's much harder for her than the rest of the cast, however, is dealing with shield. When most characters see an opponent holding shield right in front of their face, the answer to the situation for them is very simple. Grab beat shield, so punish their shield and grab them. Surely nothing could go wrong if ZSS tries this, right? Wrong. Why is this the case? Well, it has to do with the properties of her grab and human reaction time. Zero Suit Samus has a tether grab, and one of the worst ones. It is tied with Normal Samus for second slowest startup of any grab in the game, only behind Min Min, and has the additional problem that not only is the initial hitbox slow, its hitbox also extends far slower than most of its counterparts, taking as many as 25 frames to reach its longest point. Human reaction time, when measured in frames, is highly variable depending on what the human is reacting to. When reacting to something they are expecting, human reaction time is incredibly quick, somewhere in the teens of frames. When they are not expecting something, but also aren't surprised by it, it is slower. When they are surprised by it, it is significantly slower. What this means is that if someone is expecting to be grabbed by Zero Suit Samus, they can, at nearly all ranges, react to her animation with spot dodge and get a massive punish on her whiff due to the move's insane end lag. The problem with grabbing a shield is that the only way to get directly punished for shielding an ultimate, with exceptions that don't apply to Zero Suit, is to get grabbed. Even subconsciously, nearly everyone who is holding shield is expecting to be grabbed, meaning that they will often react to Samus moving with an option to avoid it. While almost every other character in the game has grabs fast enough to not be reactable anyway, this poses a massive problem for Zero Suit that makes dealing with shield uniquely difficult for her. So how does she find grabs at top level? I'm glad you asked, because this leads me to my next tip for her in neutral. Pay attention to shield patterns and start grabbing as a read on shield rather than a reaction. Because our grab is too slow to punish people who are already shielding, we, more than any other character in the game, need to be thinking slightly further ahead in this regard. One of the most important things for any Zero Suit player to be thinking about at all times during a match are the options their opponent likes to do before shielding. One of the classic shield patterns is opponents who like to shield after landing aerials. If you've identified this habit in your opponent, this means that in order to get a grab punish, you need to grab your opponent as they are inputting the landing aerial, and not when they are already shielding. Because they have no reason to anticipate a grab over any other punish, they won't be expecting the grab and will habitually flash their shield as they have been the whole match. And by the time their brain has process processed your grab, they've already been caught. There are many more subtler shield habits than an opponent could have like dashing forward into shield, shield camping while holding an item, and so on. As a slight tangent, this thought process is exactly how Marth, Ridley, and any other character with a move that punishes shield but is humanly reactable find their grabs and shield breaks as well. Obviously the big caveat here is that higher level opponents will adapt and change their habits to perhaps spot dodging after landing aerials, but this is exactly what we want, as we can usually get significantly higher reward and lower risk punishes on habits that aren't shield. At higher level, it can feel like you're trying to make an objectively incorrect but very persuasive argument to your opponent as to why they should stop shielding after everything and make our lives easier. 
Dealing with shield as ESS is enough content for its own video, but I kept so I kept this tip limited to how to find grabs specifically. But if you want to be here when the How to Beat Shield video drops, the best way is to subscribe to Cincy Fear Channel, where it will be uploaded. Make sure to share this with your friends and check out our other videos like Geist 3 Tips for Bayonetta, and I'll see you around.